Hello everybody and welcome to our fourth lockdown assembly. Today we're talking about having a healthy mind and a healthy body. I'm going to start by saying a prayer. This week's prayer was a prayer written by Edric in year six. So let's join our hands. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, give us the power to wake up in the morning and say, Today is the day I prove myself. Give us the courage to step out of our comfort zone and explore. Whether it's to try a new food, learn something new, or help with chores. Because letting your light shine isn't easy. You will need friends and family to encourage you along the way. Although it may be a struggle at first, your light will shine from the highest peak for everyone else. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Edric, for that prayer today. That really fits in with what we're going to be talking about. But last week, I talked to you about the importance of reading. And I set you a mission to tell me all about your favourite books and send me in pictures of you reading them. And I have been absolutely overwhelmed with your response. So many of you have sent in brilliant book reviews and brilliant pictures of you. It's amazing to see that you are loving books and loving reading. I'm delighted with you. So well done, everybody. So let's have a look at what we've all been getting up to. So here we've got some girls in year two who are loving reading. You can see them all reading their favourite books there. You can see Sophia, who loves horse riding, is reading a book about horse riding and on a rocking horse. Well done, girls. Here's two cool, crazy brothers who are showing that they love reading. Well done, Kiri and Andreas. And some more people getting stuck into their favourite books. It's lovely to see you all being so engrossed in your reading. Don't forget us, we love reading too. And of course, we've got our Jan in year two, who obviously is reading about penguins, because as we all know, or anyone who knows Jan will know, he's obsessed with penguins. And Jan in year one, he's trying to catch a star, just like the book that he's reading there. That's one of my favourite books. And then we've got Lily and Ruby looking really cool reading their books from Foundation. Well done, guys. More smiley, happy book readers here snuggling up with their favourite books and looking very happy about it too. Well done, everybody. And of course, you know, as you do, reading upside down, just the normal thing to do for these crazy people. Why not? So some people have been sending in book reviews to help recommend their favourite books to different children. So here we've got some great book reviews and some recommendations. Um, one from Isla, which is about double act from uh, who, Jacqueline Wilson. Harry Potter, that's a big favourite. Lots of people have been sending in Harry Potter book reviews. This is one from Honora. And Neve has written this beautiful, very neat book review on the Twits. Roald Dahl being another big favourite. We can see here some more um, children who love Roald Dahl. And these two really love James and the Giant Peach. And I like the reasons that they've described there to say why they really like Jane from the Jane Peach. Diary of a Wimpy Kid seems to be another popular one. And here's some good reviews from R.A. and Jacob. They really like those set of books. Now, here we have Amelia. And as you can see, Amelia is a bookworm. She devours books. And she's read all those books there and is now looking for some more recommendations. So hopefully, Amelia, you'll be able to get some good recommendations from today. And there's Amelia's sister, Evelyn. She loves Elma and she looks really cool there in her Elma hat. Well done. I love this picture of Archie in his reading den, looking really engrossed in a good book. That's Thing by David Williams. And he's also put some other good lockdown recommendations there for people who, who are wishing to, to find some new books to read. Teresa recommends uh, the Percy Jackson books uh, because she really likes the mythical creatures in them, like the Minotaur and the Centaur. So well done, Teresa. That, that's a good set of books. And a recommendation from Annie in Foundation. I like how she's written all about her favourite book, 
um, which is a little red riding hood. This is a fabulous book. Um, it's called The Boy at the Back of the Class, and it's about a refugee boy, and he's trying to find his new family. And it's a wonderfully inspiring story, so I really do recommend that one to you if you haven't tried that one yet. So non-fiction books are also great, um, and they can teach you lots and lots. And I absolutely love the Horrible Histories uh, series, just like Kobe does. I've actually got that box set too. And I love reading them. They're, they're full of gory facts and really fun, cool things that probably your teachers won't teach you about in school. And here you can see he's dressed up as different eras, people from different eras, from the Stone Age, Vikings and Second World War. So great reading there, Kobe. Well done. Some books can make us laugh and they're great to cheer us up. And here we've got some recommendations from Billy and Jarvis, who both love the Captain Underpants books because they make them laugh a lot. David Williams books are also quite funny and they can make you laugh. And here we've got a wonderful review from Eve about Bad Dad. Lucas loves the David Williams books too. And here he is reading Grandpa's Great Escape. And of course, Lucas being Lucas, he's always dressed as grandpa and in a pool as well. Love it, Lucas. Well done. The Mr. Gum books are hilarious too. If you like a funny book, then the Mr. Gum series of books are really funny. Um, here's Betsy trying to read it whilst bouncing on the trampoline. Hilarious, Betsy. Well done. So well done, everyone who completed last week's mission. Um, it's really great to see that you love books and you love reading. So please, everybody, don't stop reading. Keep going because I promise you, it will make you smarter and smarter. So this week, we are talking about having a healthy mind and a healthy body. Um, myself and Mr Downing and Mr Hemsley have been working really hard to try and find new PE providers for you for next year. And we're really, really happy that we've found Qualitas, who are going to teach you your PE lessons. We really like them for lots and lots of reasons. Uh, they're going to be doing our lunchtime clubs and our after school clubs as well. And we really like all the different variety of sports and activities that they can offer. Because it's really, really important that as a child, you find different activities and find something that you enjoy doing and something that suits you. We also think that sport can help us uh, teach us skills that will help us not only in PA, but in our other subjects at school and in our everyday life. And they, these are what we call life skills. And some really important ones here that we want to teach you through PE by helping you enjoy and achieve in PE. And I'm going to come back to those later and talk about some of those. And you might think, oh, I hate PE. I am rubbish at it. No one picks me for the teams. I, I, I'm no good at it. I can't do it. I don't like it. And you know what? That's exactly how I used to feel when I was at school. I used to dread those PE days because at my school, it was all about being the best in the class at it. And you know what? I wasn't the best in the class. And that made me feel useless and it made me feel upset. So I wasn't very good at PE, so I didn't really try it. And that is why it is so, so important for me now that PE isn't like that at our school, because PE doesn't have to be like that. PE isn't about being the best person in the class. It's about being the best version of you that you can be. Bettering yourself, having a good attitude, believing that you can do it. And the way to do that is by trying lots of different things. So lots of kids try football, but maybe that's not for you. Maybe you would enjoy something else like martial arts or athletics, swimming, cricket, dancing, lots of different things to try. But of course, during lockdown, 
we can't always do a lot of those things, but there are ways that you can still stay active during lockdown. You could do some of the videos like Joe Wicks um, online. You could go cycling or skipping. You can go running. If you're lucky enough to have a trampoline at home, trampoline is a great exercise or dancing. So there's lots of things you can do to still stay active. And when you do stay active and you find different things that you enjoy, that's when you can find something that you can be good at and you can achieve in it. And when I realised that, that's when I began to enjoy sport too. And now I really like to go cycling. And you can see here some pictures of me cycling with my friends and with my family. And it keeps me fit and it keeps me healthy. And that's all good for my body and mind. So to help you get active, we've planned a virtual sports day because obviously we can't do our normal sports day. And the aim of it is to just get you outside, get you active and having fun. So the sports day is run by healthy kids and they've got a website and they've got an app. And on the website, you can see different videos of the different activities. And on the app, you can track the progress and the activity that you're doing. So here you can see our current leaderboard of the classes that have been most active. So this is just getting out and doing different events and you can log them on the app. So you can see Miss Turner's class, brilliant news there. They are in the lead with 361 points, closely followed by Year 6 Miss Arnold's and then Year 1 Miss Williamson's. You can see Year 4 Mr Hamill's class, I've got a little green arrow next to them. That means they're creeping up the leaderboard as are Miss Harrison's class. So, have a think about these different values that sport can help you to achieve. By finding an activity that you enjoy you can become more confident in it and you can become more determined to keep going. And then you become self-motivated. You can see the progress that you're making and that will mean you want to get better and better. And then you'll become what we call physically literate. Now, literate means that we can read and write. So physically literate means that we can use our bodies well to do the things that we want them to do. Sport can help you become a great communicator and a great leader. You become a challenge seeker. You're always looking out for your next goal and trying to work towards it. And that makes you aspirational and reflective because you're trying to think about what you need to do to improve. So your mission this week is to make the effort to get active. And I want you to send me a picture or write and tell me about what activity you've been doing this week. How did it make you feel? And what skills, which of these skills here do you think you've learned from it? So I can't wait to see what you all send in. And of course, if you've got the app, try and track your progress on there and really enjoy our virtual sports day, which will be 4th of July. So we're going to finish with a prayer, and this is another prayer written by one of our children. And this prayer is from Bella, and it's a beautiful prayer to finish with. So we'll join our hands again, and we'll say the prayer together. Dear God, thank you for helping me let my light shine in everything I do. Bless our teachers, bless our friends, and bless everyone. Please help the world become a better place. Thank you for helping me love one another. Thank you for helping me care for one another. Thank you for letting my light shine. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's it again for this week, guys. Hope you enjoyed our assembly. and can't wait to see the things you're going to send in about your mission. Take care. Miss you lots. Bye, everybody. Bye.